Hello students, in this video we'll discuss how to compute gross premiums that include expenses in premium calculation. So the equivalence principle for gross premiums states that the expected present value of benefits plus the expected present value of expenses must be the expected present value of premiums. So your premiums must be sufficient to cover your benefits and your expenses. So let's write out an example of this. So let's consider a whole life policy with benefit B. And let's assume also the benefit has closing expenses E. So the benefit the insurance company pays is B, and they also have to use settling expenses, and those are called settling settlement expenses. E. And let's assume also that there's commissions are 50% of first year premiums. and 10% of subsequent year premiums. So, oftentimes when a product is sold, the selling agent gets a commission on the sale of the product, and the commission is 50% in the first year and 10% in subsequent years. Let's also assume first year expenses Fixed expenses are 100 and 10 in subsequent years. So the commissions are actually a function of the premiums, so we'll have to consider that. So now let's write out the formula by the equivalence principle that we're going to use. So we know the expected present value of the premiums has to be the expected present value of the benefits and the expected present value of the expenses. So let's do it bit by bit. So the expected present value of the benefits will be equal to, well, we have a benefit of B, and that will be AX because it's an insurance policy, that's a whole life, and we'll assume it's the end of year of death. And that is the only benefit that is paid. Now, we'll throw out the expected present value of the expenses. So the expected present value of the expenses. There is a closing expense or a settlement expense of E, so it'll be EAX. Then we have to consider these premiums, the commissions. So what we can do is we can split this up into two parts over here. We have 10% of subsequent premiums, and what we can do is we can write that as 0.1 times the premium P, A, X, double dot, and that will include not only the subsequent year two, year three, and year four premiums, but if we think of this on a number line, we can say over here, here's zero, here's one, here's two, here's three, etc. So I know I get a 10% commission over here, 10% over here, 10% over here, etc. And I know they'll also get a 10% over here and I'll get an additional 40%. So there'll be an extra 40% premium that comes only at time zero. So we can add that in as plus 0.4 times the premium. That so now if we look at the 0.4 and the 1, this and this together will give me a 0.5 at time 1 and then a 0.1 at further times. That takes care of the subsequent premiums, the 50% first year commission. Now the first year expenses are 10, is 100, and the subsequent years are 10. So what I can do is I can write that as 10 
AX double dot for $10 in all years. And then there's 90 that happens initially. So the 90 plus 10 that start will give me the commissions I have. So now we have the formula. And we can write this down in terms of what the expected present value be. Now the expected present value of premiums will be P for the premium and then AX double dot. So if we put this all together, what will we get? So the left hand side will be P AX double dot is equal to, well I'll have this and this, I can group those together, so I'll have a B plus E AX. Then let's look at the fixed expense over here. So I'm going to have, I'll, put, I'll group the premium terms together. 1.1 P AX double dot plus 0.4 P plus 10 AX double dot plus 90. And if we write this over here, what we'll have is we'll have P times AX double dot minus 0.1 AX double dot from this term over here minus 0.4 is equal to B plus E AX and then plus 10 A double dot X plus 90. And we can simplify this term over here as P. Then we have a 0 0.9 A double dot X minus 0.4 is equal to B plus E AX plus 10 AX double dot plus 90. And now we find P by doing the division of these two, these two expressions. So we can find, finally, that P is equal to B plus E AX, capital AX, and then plus 10 AX double dot plus 90 over 0.9 AX double dot minus 0.4. And we've enca encapsulated all of the expenses on top. Some of the expenses are encapsulated on the bottom. I don't, have a, I don't have a pure one over here, just a pure annuity. So I have a fraction of the annuity minus a, a fixed amount. And that is how we determine gross premiums using the equivalence principle. Thank you very much.